Hello, I'm Steve from SF Marine, and in front of me here is an outboard pod for a six metre catamaran. Now, me and my dad, about a year ago now, bought a catamaran mould uh, six metres and, and shipped it down from up north. And we were told it was a Cobra cat, but I've not been able to find anything on, on the on, well, on the line, online as such, about um, the business or any previous models. So I've got one photo that came with it. Now you ask, why would I just on a whim go and pick up a cat mould? Um, looking at design principles, it was an older design, and, and I'm a firm believer that original designs were designed for a purpose and a reason, as opposed to uh, for the sole purpose of mass production, which a lot of boats do seem that way these days. Um, so, as anything, uh, making things new again, uh, this is seen a few years probably in many a marina, seen many a season and winter pass through. Um, so we're actually going to be rebuilding this as well. Now, we could mould a boat out of it, it wouldn't be an issue just to flatten this off, polish it up um, and, and the same with, with the rest of the tooling uh, for the boat itself. So, we just want to make sure it's right and obviously you spend a bit of time on it and, and end up a nicer product at the end of the day. This is just purely for your own education of, of the sort of processes that we go through to rebuild um, something like this or producing new moulds. Um, so whether you can see the fog glass the skin on this is actually rather thin, you can see how flex it is. There's a lot of uh, give in it. Uh, the faces here are warped, it's actually sucked in, which obviously is not going to help you uh, build the boat it's not going to look pretty either so first of all we've assessed what's flat what's not what needed doing um, and, and just sort of went over it uh, to see where we're going to end up with it so after we've done that I've ground off these faces got rid of all the dead fiberglass all, all the mould mildew and whatever else was built up into this um, and tried to go back to something a bit more clean you know something, something that's going to be nice to bond to uh, like repairing or fixing or, or should I say tending to a wound is you've got to remove the dead flesh before you can start to rebuild and, and recover from that. Uh, so after that stage we've made up some wooden panels out of 18 mil marine ply and then bonded these onto the mould um, using cabasil or microfibers, uh, silica, whatever term you want to use um, and then sandwiched it in the sense of had this on this side with uh, other timber beneath it and then some very heavy weights on the other side to try and push back and straighten those faces. Um, and now we're pretty, I mean, bang on, or, or within even in half a millimetre in some small areas. Um, but again, we can address that later down the line. Um, so it's good, we're back to where we need to be. So we've made all these up, and these in turn have stiffened up the mould. It's very flexy, you could twist it, you could pull it, um, and then now this is stiffened up. So after that, I've gone over with a single skin coat of 300 gram um, chop strand mat. Now, I could have gone a lot higher, not really necessary to go as low as 300 for this. It was more just to give me um, a nice base to work from um, and a nice bit of shape uh, because different mats like certain shapes and it's just a bit of ease. I can sand this down and we can really go for it now and, and, and end up where we need to be. Um, so it's added again a bit more stiffness to the shape um, and the panel so that the mould's not going to warp. When we go into the next stage, which would be to bulk up and really start to thicken up everything we're doing on here. So, after that, we've gone over with another eight ounces over the top of the timber um, and extra stiffening on these flanges as well. So now the flanges are twice as thick as they were. Um, and then now, we're nice and solid. We've got a straight edge here. So when I run this on the inside faces, you know, I can see how parallel they are and, and, and everything sort of where it needs to be from now. So once this is done, um, that's it, we're going to do this on all the other sides and then I'm probably going to paint this as well with some top coat uh, just so no moisture can get through the fiberglass, which is porous anyway, so we want to protect that timber in there. In case I want, if I'm going to put it outside at any point or even if it's under cover, um, we're not exactly the most forgiving when it comes to weather, um, so it's just about preserving and protecting you know, what, what the amount of time and effort that I'm going to put into making this right. So after that, we're going to go through and work the inside. Now, someone's already sort of ground off this inner lip. There is a radius on the back here as well, um, which ties it into the boat. Uh, we're, we're going to take that off and use a uh, beeswax putty in the future to just tie that into the back of the boat. I'd rather that every time than what's going to happen. What has happened is 
all these break out. Yeah, and every time you pull the mould, if, if they're not been laminated correctly, is one issue that you're going to have. They're going to start moving, um, and just it's just going to be a lot easier. So this is all going to be fed down, reshaped, regelled, um, and then yeah, refinished. So say so nice and solid now from, like, from old flexi. So we're where we want to be. We've got a nice bit of base to work with, um, and then obviously everything's becoming more solid uh, and where we need to be. Uh, I, this isn't necessary to regel if I didn't want to, but I will just for the principle of doing it. Um, so yeah, see how we go with this. We're hoping to have this built or, or start getting to closer to production towards the end of the year, um, and maybe in the start of next year uh, there might be one available uh, to come and look at. Cool, thanks very much.